we have three speakers in this session, and uh, the first speaker is uh, uh, Professor Fu. Hu. Now let's first introduce our first speaker. Um, professor Fu is an associate professor at uh, uh, Shanghai University of Finance and Economics Institute for Theoretical Computer Science. And before that, he was an assistant professor at University of British Columbia. He obtained his PhD in computer science from Cornell University and was a postdoc at Microsoft Research New England Lab and Caltech. His research interest is uh, in the intersection of economics and computation and online algorithms. Now let's welcome uh, Fuhu. Thank you so much for the introduction. Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 it's OK. Oh, OK. Uh, and uh, thank you, Professor Chen, and uh, for all the organizers for having me here. Um, it's my great pleasure to present Oblivious Online Contention Resolution Schemes. Uh, it's a joint work with Ping Yan Lu, uh, Tang Zhi Hao, Wu Hongxun, Wu Jing Zhao, Zhang Tianfan, and my PhD student Abner Turkiel Taub uh, at UBC. Um, this so this work was published at um, uh, SOSA this year, and SOSA, you know, is the Symposium for Simple Algorithms. So this is a relatively technically simple work, uh, but I find it conceptually quite interesting. Um, so let me first introduce, uh, uh, let me tell you uh, in, in, in one slide what this talk is about. Uh, so online contention resolution scheme is a framework that encompasses many stochastic optimization problems. And this work studies the possibility of OCRS when the underlying prior is not known. So we give a positive result in the simplest setting, and we gave neg negative results in more general settings. So let me first define what is OCRS. And to talk about that, I need to first talk, uh, tell you what is contention resolution scheme without online. So the setup is a universe U and a downward closed feasible sets F, which is a set of subsets of U. As input, we're given X, which is the marginal distribution of a distribution over F. So, um, so you have a distribution over feasible sets, and then you, you look at the marginal distribution, that is X, which is a vector. And uh, another part of the input is a sample set S. So in S, each element I appears independently with probability Xi. As an output, we need to output a subset T of S and an algorithm that given X and out, uh, given X and S outputs a subset T of S is called a C-balanced contention resolution scheme if for each element i, the probability that it is accepted into the final output t is at least 1 over c times xi. So this framework was originally formulated by Chakuri, Vondrak, and Zentlus in 2014 as a tool for submodular function maximization. As you can see, X is uh, X comes from a distribution over feasible sets. So in some sense, it's a it's a continuous solution, and um, uh, and S is a, is sampled from X, and then we produce T from S. So in some sense, T is uh, the the result of some rounding procedure when we are given an X ante or continuous uh, solution. Um, OK, and uh, an element in S, we would call it to be active. So this is just the jargon. OK, so now uh, let's uh, let's add the online part. So in the online contention resolution problem, we are given uh, X, but the, the set S is not given directly instead. We are uh, instead the elements of U arrive one by one, and when each one arrives, we see whether it belongs to S, i.e., we see whether it is active. This and then 
an online contention resolution scheme needs to decide for each I in S whether uh, whether to accept it into T when it arrives. Uh, and similarly for uh, to the CRS, we, we would like that each element that is act for, for each element, it is accepted into T with probability at least one over C times X I. That is conditioning. On, so for each element conditioning on it being active, it is accepted with probability at least a one over C. Um, and, and this model was proposed by Feldman, Svensson, and Zinklusen in 2016. So, so why are, are we interested in CRS and OCRS? Um, as I said, the distribution X can be seen as from a correlated distribution, and uh, that distribution it can be from uh, solving a continuous relaxation of, a, of an optimization problem, um, or a solving an X anti relaxation um, of a problem. So, um, uh, so because the elements in S are independently sampled, whereas X originally comes from a correlated distribution, so CRS is intimately connected with the notion of correlation gap, if you're familiar with that. And CRS, as I uh, mentioned, was invented for rounding for submodular maximization. And OCRS, um, because of its uh, connection to ex ante relaxation, it generates approximately optimal online mechanisms. So this is related to game theory. Um, and therefore, it is related to uh, property inequalities and sequential post pricing and so on. So uh, before I tell you what is oblivious um, and oblivious OCRS, let's uh, let me show you a very simple example of an OCRS, and this is the single in, in the singleton setting. So here F is the set of single singleton subsets of U, and then X because it, it's from a distribution over F. Now F is all singletons, and therefore X is simply a distribution on U. Uh, so here is a very simple two selectable OCRS. When element I arrives um, and we see that it is active, suppose we have not accepted every, uh, anything, then we will accept I so that it is accepted. Uh, it is, uh, sorry, this is a typo. It, it, it is accepted with probability XI over two. Um, so, uh, we need to be sure that this is possible, uh, but this 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 is indeed possible because um, the probability that we have accepted anything pre prior to I's arrival is the sum of X J divided by two, and therefore with probability at least one minus sum over uh, sum of X J over two, where J is uh, ranges over the elements before I, this is at least half. And therefore, at, with probability at least a half, we have not accepted anything when I arrives. Therefore, if I, if I is active, we can accept it with this probability. And that guarantees that I is accepted with probability Xi over two. And by the, uh, and therefore this, this argument can continue is essentially by an induction. Um, so uh, I hope, well, this is very fast, I know, uh, but I hope this convinces you that this is a two selectable OCRS. And in general, uh, if F is a matroid, there is a two selectable OCRS. Um, even in this very simple setting of singleton setting, uh, we see that we crucially used the information X, the distribution, uh, when we de devise this OCRS. So the problem of oblivious OCRS basically asks, what if, what if we do not know this prior X? Oh, by the way, this, this two selectable, uh, this two is tight, uh, even for the singleton setting. So we say an OCRS is oblivious if, if it has no knowledge of the distribution X. And uh, so why are we interesting, uh, interested in this? So 
I hope you uh, you would agree with me that this uh, looks mathematically attractive. Um, but, but other than that, there are uh, other reasons. Um, so in 2020, Shading Dukmi proposed uh, a possible connection between OCRS and Metroid Secretary, the famous Metroid Secretary conjecture. He showed that Metroid Secretary is reducible to a one selectable, sorry, this should be omega one selectable Metroid OCRS with correlated inputs, meaning the elements in S are not independent but correlated and also limited knowledge on X. And of course, uh, a special case of limited knowledge on X is having no knowledge on X. Although Shadding himself already showed that the kind of OCRS he was looking for was impossible. And in fact, in 2022, he completely removed the part uh, with limited knowledge on X. Essentially, he actually showed that Metroid Secretary conjecture is equivalent to Omega-1 selectable Metroid OCRS with correlated inputs. Still, um, so our work was right be in between his two works, between the 2020 work and 22 work. So that was one of our motivations to study uh, OCRS with um, limited knowledge of distribution. Um, another reason that prompted us to ask this question is for the closely related online problem of profit inequalities, there are very interesting works that remove uh, the reliance on the knowledge of distribution by replacing it with a very by, with very few samples. In fact, it can be shown that if you have just a single sample from each distribution in the profit inequality setting, that suffices to recover the optimal competitive ratio for that problem. So, uh, so we were so. Therefore, we were also interested in uh, whether uh, whether limited knowledge uh, on X can be um, can suffice for a good OCRS. So, our main results. Uh, the first is so we ask what is the best possible oblivious OCRS in the singleton setting. Here we gave. Uh, an oblivious OCRS that is E selectable. Um, and, uh, and we show that E is actually the best possible. The second result, as I promised, is a negative result. It asks um, um, whether there is an omega one selectable oblivious OCRS for matroids. And we show that this is not possible. In fact, not only are omega-1 selectable oblivious OCRS not exist. In fact, even for CRS, um, such good CRS cannot exist. Uh, so for, we showed that for transversal matroids and graphic matroids, uh, no oblivious CRS can be omega-1 balanced. Uh, and in fact, our Conclusion is even stronger. We showed not only oblivious CRS cannot exist for made choice, but uh, even with constantly many samples from distributions, such CR CRS is not possible. So uh, let me uh, first describe uh, our optimal oblivious uh, CR OCRS for uh, for the singleton setting. So. Uh, uh, an intuition that sounds, the intuition I'm going to give you sounds crazy, but it just turns out to be the right one. So let's think about how do we emulate the two selectable OCRS without knowing X. Remember the, the two selectable OCRS is the, the optimal one that I just show you, showed you. So a natural thought would be that we could use the elements that have shown up before an active element I as some sample from X. So we can use the activity information of the previous elements to estimate the distribution X. Mm -hmm. So now if we see the first active element I, uh, what do the previous elements, the elements before I tell us about X? If we see them as samples, then 
uh, you know, if then this would su suggest that the, the the sum of over j before i x j is simply equal to zero, and therefore to emulate the the two selectable OCRS, we should accept i with probability half. Now, uh, suppose we did not accept i, and then when the second active element i prime comes, what do we know from the previous elements? Well, now, because i prime is the second act active element, and there was a single active i before it, so a very a crazy estimate of x, the, the distribution would say that the sum over xj, j before i prime, is equal to one, uh, and therefore the um, therefore the 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 denominator uh, in the in the OCRS I showed you before becomes infinity. And uh, a, a one way to interpret that would be that we should accept i prime with probability one. So this is a very crazy but intuitive way uh, of emulating the two selectable OCRS when we do not know x. And the resulting algorithm is simply this. With probability half, we accept the first active element. Otherwise, accept the second. It turns out that this algorithm is e-selectable, and this is not too hard to prove. Uh, we, can, uh, we can rigorously write down the probability of accepting any element i, um, and it is this function. Uh, so if we write a, a of i as the set of elements before i, then the probability of accepting i is, uh, is, is this function. And uh, this function minimizes to 1 over e when x is, uh, is the, the uniform distribution. Um, so, so, this, so this shows that any, uh, any element when active is accepted with probability at least 1 over e. Uh, the interest, the more interesting part is that this algorithm is in fact um, optimal. So we show that there is no oblivious OCRS that is E plus epsilon selectable for any positive epsilon. The proof idea uh, is, so we first show that a certain family of OCRS cannot be better than E selectable. We see, uh, we, sh we say an OCRS is counting based if for any active i, the probability that i is accepted is a function of only the number of active elements before i. It is not hard to show that a counting-based OCRS can't be e plus epsilon, uh, be, be e plus epsilon uh, selectable. Sorry, this should actually, actually be e minus epsilon select, selectable. Um, OK, so uh, this is this is relatively easy, but uh, but not all OCRS has such simple structure. And the crucial idea here is to show that for any OCRS, there is a subset S on which it is approximated by a counting based OCRS. And um, we show that for any uh, for any S of desired size, there is a large enough N such that for any OCRS <coughs> on, on input 1 to n, uh, the corresponding subset on which it is accept, approximated by a counting-based OCRS is of that desired size. And, and then we can use our lower bound for counting-based OCRS on this small subset S. Um, and, and the way we show that any OCRS contains a subset on which it, it behaves like a counting-based OCRS is via a, a hypergraph Ramsey theorem. Uh, this is a very nice connection. And in fact, this proof technique was used first by Coria, Duting, Fisher, and Chevrier uh, in 2019. Uh, their work is on the relationship between profit inequality and, uh, and, and the secretary problem. Um, okay, um, I have okay. Still a few minutes left. Uh, okay, then I will quickly show you uh, our impossibility result, which says 
for any positive C, there is no C selectable oblivious CRS for graphic or transversal matrix. For, uh, for the time constraint, I will only show you uh, for graphic matrix. So uh, our lower bound example is constructed on, a, on complete bipartite graphs. Uh, so on the left hand side, we have N vertices and on the right hand side, we have M vertices and all the, all the edges are present between N and M. Uh, and we construct two kinds of distributions, two families of distributions. Uh, one, so on, on the one side, we have the weak distribution. It is simply the distribution where each edge has weight one over M. Uh, it is easy to show that this is, uh, this is actually a marginal distribution over distributions over trees. And uh, for a strong distribution, uh, well, it is called strong because it's stronger than the weak distribution. It is essentially a weak distribution, but uh, with the ad addition of a hard hardwired event that is rare in the weak distribution. So here is an illustration. So uh, what you see is a bipart is a complete bipartite graph, and you see some edges are bold. So these bold edges would be hardwired in the strong distribution meaning that these edges would be active with probability one. So in each strong distribution, there is a special node on the left hand side. It is some UI and all of all of its edges are hardwired to be present. And then all the other edges have the same weight as in the weak distribution. It is equally easy to show that uh, such a strong distribution is a marginal distribution of a distribution over trees. And our so the way we show that this uh, no OCRS is possible, no CRS is possible uh, for these distributions is uh, essentially we derive um, an upper bound uh, and a lower bound. Uh, and so so an upper bound is derived on the weak di distribution. Uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention that the, the um, uh, a key relationship between the weak distribution and the stronger the strong distributions is that conditioning on that a sample from the weak distribution has all the edges that are incident to a left node UI. Then the posterior distribution is precisely the strong distribution with delta UI hardwired. This is the key relationship. OK. Um, the, so OK, so the way we derive a, a contradiction is um, we uh, on a sample from the weak distribution, we define a set U star. This is a random set U star, which is the set of left nodes with all of its incident S edges active. So in this in this sample, U3 and U4, U, U4 are uh, constitute the set U star. So we give two bounds on the number of edges that should be accepted, which are adjacent to U star. So on the uh, for the weak distribution, the uh, the number of edges accepted that are adjacent to U star should be upper bounded by the rank of these edges. Uh, the, the rank of uh, of the edges that are adjacent to U star, and that is at most the size of U star plus M minus one. And if we take the expectation uh, that is N over M to the power of M plus M minus one, this is an upper bound. Uh, on the other hand, we can derive a lower bound on the number of edges accepted in the vicinity of U star. And that is at least N times M times uh, divided by M to the M power times C. This, uh, what's the so the reason is. Because our algorithm is oblivious, it doesn't know whether it's seeing uh, the weak uh, a sample from the weak distribution and a sample from the, the strong distribution. And therefore, when whenever it sees um, edges, uh, whenever it sees that all the edges adjacent to a certain UI are active, 
it should uh, by uh, it because it is C balanced against uh, the strong distribution. We know that all such edges should be accepted with probability at least C. Um, and this allows us to uh, calculate the, the total number of edges uh, accepted in this set. So, um, so with probability one over m to the nth, uh, any edge has its left endpoint in U star. And because there are altogether n, I, n m edges, and with probability C, uh, such an edge should be accepted. We know that this expectation is at least this much. And um, this upper bound and this lower bound allows us to to, uh, uh, to arrive that C should be smaller than or equal to one over M plus this expression. And now if we uh, let M be arbitrarily large and then let N be even larger, much, much larger, um, then we can see that no constant C, uh, no positive C can stand to this test. So, um, and uh, we remark that even with uh, constantly many samples, you can't distinguish a weak and a strong distribution. I know I'm a bit fast here, um, but I'm actually over time. So, um, so to summarize, uh, we have an, uh, an opt optimal oblivious OCIs for the singleton setting. We have uh, an impossibility result for oblivious o OCIs over matroids. Uh, as open questions, let me mention that uh, we still do not know to get uh, omega-1 selectable matroid OCRS, how many samples suffice? And uh, a related question is for matroid property inequalities, for those of you who know who, what that problem is, the sample complexity is uh, still open. Uh, let me stop here, thanks. I'm happy to take questions. Okay, thanks, uh, Professor Fu Hu, for this nice talk. Any questions? Uh, then I have a quick question. Uh, so in, 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 in your talk, you actually assume that you have uh, no knowledge of, uh, of the distribution X. Uh, but uh, if we have some partial information, uh, maybe it's not uh, a limited number of samples, maybe some other partial information of this dis distribution X. Can we, uh, can, can we get rid of these impossibility results? Is it possible? Uh, this is a nice question. I guess the it boils down to what kind of information is available. Uh, let me mention that uh, there was a wine paper this year uh, by my colleagues at uh, Shufa, uh, Jihao, Tan Jihao, Nick uh, Graven, and a student. Um, um, sorry, what's his name? Anyway, they were studying. Uh, they were studying the profit inequality problem. As I mentioned, a single a, a single sample from each distribution suffices to recover the full competitive ratio of a, of a profit inequality. So they showed that suppose from each distribution you do not have a sample, but with certain probability you have a sample. Uh, then, um, so uh, yeah, I, I know this 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 is involved. Yeah, so from so. The previous result says from each there in the probability inequality you have n distributions, and the previous result says from each distribution you have one sample that suffices. They showed that if with if if with certain probabilities you from each you know from each distribution with certain probability you have a sample, that partial samples uh, suffice to recover uh, a certain competitive ratio. Of course, the ratio would depend on. How how large these probabilities are? Uh, I guess that's one way to uh, model partial information. Um, that it's a it's a good question. I I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know for. Um, okay, so uh, the problem is for matroid for for matroids we we simply know so little. So for 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 both property inequality and OCRS uh, the it's basically we, we don't know. For OCRS, we only know that constantly many samples are, do not suffice. Um, I would I would I would be curious. I would love to hear uh, ideas on what partial information you know in what form those that partial information could be in. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I see. Maybe it also depends on which specific problems you are trying to solve. They don't have in, in the, gen general. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, that definitely. Okay. Um, if there is no more other questions, let's thank the speaker Fu Hu again, and uh, let's.